So let's start again, carry on. As I had a little glitch in my time system and my phone had a little breakdown because of storage, I had to delay some stuff and now it's running again. So I can cover up more stuff like the records that I brought with me because it's not one, it's midnight and I have a little more, bit more time before they kick me out. So part two for today, let's cover up some more stuff. Um, I wanted to say something about September and I wanted to say something about records that mean much to me. So this one, Soul Station, is one of my top three Blue Note records, or top five I would say. Beautiful, masterful done from first to the last second. Not too much, not too complicated, beautiful melodies, a must listen. It's a great pick for somebody, a newbie, for jazz, like who wants to go into the material a little bit. Um, yeah. So Soul Station, I have, in September 2015, I wasn't at the train station because my grandfather passed, passed the station to his next physical form. And I had to go through the green village where he lived and yeah, this record helped me express my feelings. Um, it helped me get out my feelings, what I felt about this re uh, sudden losing of, of the grandfather. Because this was not in any way imagined in my head that something like this could happen. So this, especially track number two, the this I dig of you, I listened to it over and over again when I went this train ride to the green village and yeah it helped me um, getting through this in a positive way it's uh, a record that uh, from the first listen I love really hardcore if I was a, uh, a teacher in a, in a jazz university or something first thing I would give to my students in their first class in the first year would be like three records to listen to and this one would be the first one I give to them definitely one of those three so recommend to everybody I actually compared the, the mastering of of the Japanese early 90s version and this one so I started with the Rudy van Gelder remastering this is from 1999 a really early one from that series because it's, it was really done through the 2000s and the Rudy van Gelder remasterings are really good I like them it this one made the imprint in my head and then later I listened to Japanese version which is from the early 90s and it's much more it's much more calm the mastering is much more on the lower volume side like everything from the early 90s is more calm than what is done now and what especially was done in the two early 2000s so now they drop the they drop the electricity down again yeah early today it's 20 minutes more so yeah so I want to say this um, blue notes the remaster ser series from Rudy van Gelder I like them big time I also like the Japanese one there are some things more in the background like more buried in the Japanese version and generally the Rudy van Gelder thing is a little bit more clear like it has all the things like a little bit more clear audible 
yet it's also really loud so yeah but it's cool I like it recommend it I recommend uh, this version if you have those two to choose from yeah next one this one it has this beautiful this autumn song on there it has uh, a lot of standards that are really just masts this uh, is a record that everybody who is interested in jazz and also the non jazz heads they can relate to this because it's it's uh, the tunes are really easy going for the, for the ears and for everything you know things that you can sing along it's Ella Fitzgerald which is a singer you know she is just listen ever she's everybody can can listen to this I don't think that it's anyone running around who really doesn't like this woman's voice and there are iconic songs on there like Nature Boy, One Note Samba, My Old Flame, and I Ain't Got Nothing But The Blues, The Starter, it's, I love this uh, big time a lot too. That's all the whole list through it, you know, it's, it's iconic and it's also remastering, that sounds really nice and good. So this is a thing. Pablo yeah. fantasychess.com. I don't know. I think it's Pablo was a label. I don't know really. I never, you know, I never even researched Pablo because I don't have too much of it from this label. Obviously, I always thought it was Riverside, but I don't know. Hello. So next one. Another acoustic thing that I really love a lot and I showed it in one earlier record talk. It's from Pat Metheny and Charlie Hayden. It also has this This vibe um, that's kind of for I like to listen to this record also in the in the like in the late summer and in the early um, autumn. These short stories are thing things that are really spacey, which is like like the cover all already suggests. There's much space between those two um, rec, uh, instruments, you know, the, the double bass and the acoustic guitar from Pat Metheny. They really manage those space thing masterful in there, and I like especially message to a friend which I all at first knew from uh, from the record Schofield and Matthew uh, 1994 there's also a, a space spacey spaced cover on the front I can see your house from here where the electrified version from this song is on there, I knew that, as I said at first, and I love both. You know, I I came to this record just because I liked this song "Message to a Friend" that much. So I somehow found it out, I think, in YouTube that there is this thing existing, and I I just gave it a go beautiful thing on verve 
And let's go to another world. Oh no, it's Warner. Yeah, I can. I have here what I want to show Count Basie, the Atomic Mr. Basie. It was the first Count Basie record I checked out back then. I really have to say those special packs with five CDs yeah. in there are really worth the money. They're really not, not expensive, the 10 euro range. And they have, they have the original, you know, the original covers done and the packs with all the detailed information. It is so much better than for, for example, some others some other manufacturers that do things like this for more they charge more and give less so really have to be looking twice and inform yourself before you buy these things here so this one the atomic mr basic it's really really good it's something that enhanced my my understanding of jazz back then also so it's actually on roulette records and this is what I, I love so much about about uh, those things those reissues where they really do the original artwork because I want to know these kind of things now it's Warner Music Parlophone follow us on Twitter find us on Facebook you know it's this was not on back then on there now it's this and I was really disappointed with this Harry Hancock set I already mentioned that earlier in the earlier record talk where they had just thing like a thing like this you know and it was something like this you know but it was blank and only the the tunes were written that's not enough I want to know what's what's behind the lines yeah so this is also you know also something for somebody who is not an uh, experienced jazz listener but wants to go into it this is a big band vibe that you just can only like you know this is it's really pushing forward it's really hardcore swinging but in a way that it's easy to access to listen to this is a joy and the songs are really in your face like they're so tight it's really atomic At the band, you know the cover says it this is like like an at atomic explosion this big band I would have loved you know to see them live doing this live Neil have the arrangements, really have the arrangements to have a little bird game in there. Yeah, what do we have, you know, in to have this here, this leads then to this, that's electrified, it's electric, you know, it looks like this is an atomic uh, power plant. This here is the World Trade Center and you know the space I said before like Charlie Hayden. This is now is the record where you have the message to a friend on there. The version I knew first. Yeah, and I also have this imagination sometimes, you know, if you look at this cover. Not, I don't talk now about the symbolism that you have in there with the World Trade Center and all that, you know, things that happened and because this was 1994 and, um, I imagine standing here in Europe and looking I'm loving this record, yeah. Um, and looking over the sea, over the Atlantic Ocean, 
over there to New York to the World Trade Center or what's there now or the Empire State Building you know to New York to the States look over there to the distance just waiting to to go there sometime and for now it's a message to a friend and a message to all those amazing artists that are from there that I love that I consider my family and on there I saw you know I saw them live I saw John Scofield live I, I saw Steve Swallow live I saw Bill Stewart live I bet nothing you not and yeah I want to have this party this everybody's party with all of them quiet rising you speak my language guys you taught me this language also and I say really thank you do not what do we have left yeah I also want to say greetings to Madonna and one year before it kind of it was this Maluma song you know Medellin that I also did a painting for that and I really you know I did I was sitting in a McDonald's in in a city away from here waiting for the train sipping a coffee and I was hearing this in the radio in the McDonald's radio like oh my god what's that that's so great I love it so much and I, I just didn't know who it was and I also would not, not have ever guessed it was Madonna because it didn't sound to me like Madonna in the first place and that you know all this background noises from a McDonald's and all these things that you have added to the mix sitting next to a lot of young kids chatting and talking loud about and different things and on the other side the, the McDonald's stuff and the other side you know the train uh, announcements and all that you know but I just heard it and I went to the, the girl on the counter and she couldn't also not say me because I wanted to know if there are, is there some computer playlist or whatever that you can look at it what is it please tell me who is doing that I didn't know um, she didn't know and then I researched like the, the hell out of the green and found out it was Madonna and wow I liked it I just I still love it this, this, this is a great one this I should listen to this whole album that she did but sadly I just know this one song but this one kicks Medellin and also I had um, done some music going through music uh, in the last week which led me also back to some stuff from Baby Shambles or Pete Doherty that have a special part in my life too and there I found again his first solo record Pete Doherty's first one um, Craze Wastelands and its leading single which is this one the last of the English Roses Um, yeah, this was Cannonball, you know what I mean? Bill Evans, I will come to that another time, but you know what I mean. So the last of the English roses, beautiful back cover, which is amazing not only musically but I always liked Pete's um, kind of special artworks beautiful thing beautiful song and also I'm a little connected to this song on a personal level you know, it means much to me so what do we have more yeah I'm gonna read a little 
practice next week. Chose this book. Um, I have a few of them and I really can recommend those little black books. There, I have read many of them already, but just felt like, oh yeah, let's read a little. And especially the Russians are, I like to read Russian short stories. But I had this time in 2014-15 where I was just going nuts for them. Tostoyevsky and Tolstoy also this uh, one, how was it called, like, how much land does a man need or something like this. It was a really great story and now it's Ruskin. Just grab that. That's not a record. I think that's everything. Yeah. So for next week, uh, don't know yet which one gonna be the record of the week, but it can be that it's gonna be the control from Janet that I pick on. That I will go with the feeling, you know. Monday, Tuesday. Let's see what come up. And there is another record. That's that I wanna that I wanna have. Listen, because one is left from from a special artist that I love. And it's a live album. I, I maybe gonna check this, but I have to go out of town for like two hours to get to this record because it's a little hard to find. And I found it somewhere there in the record store. Let's see if I do that. I will keep you informed for sure. So let's see if I have anything to add here. Family Man, Tango in the Night. I like uh, the Fleetwood Mac at all, you know, from start to beginning, all those inclinations. And now at this week on the 9th, this would be the Wednesday, they release a box set of the transition phase with Bob Welch and Bob Weston, I think was his name. They had a few guitarists before they came to Stevie Nicks and Lindsay Buckingham version. So, yeah. Let's see it's if, if we're gonna make another, another record talk this week I'm gonna much to come musical wise and I maybe will also release some music and record some music this week so I really make those things into it you know by intuition and by how I feel, how the vibes are coming along. Maybe I do some garage remixes, I don't know. Let's see what's gonna come. And yeah, as always, I really thank for, you know, the artists for giving those pleasures to me, especially Janet Jackson for this week. And yeah. It's a little, it's a little uh, much. The list that I would have to thank, but I'm gonna conclude now with saying goodbye. Wish you a nice night and keep the power. I love you.